when you day trade and you got your own money, you're not responsible to anyone. Like there, the only parameters you have in, in your trading is what you put on it. So that can be okay, but that can be challenging for some folks. I think I like the idea of, of, of having those parameters and actually someone can look at any time and see how are you doing and and what's going on there. I think that that piece for me, that there's a bit of an accountability that comes with that. And I, I, I actually quite like that. Welcome everybody to another funded trader of Trader Pool. Today, Mike is with me, a new funded trader. How's it going, Mike? Thanks for coming. Growing great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Nice. So, Mike, been with us for quite a while. Tell us a little bit about the process because you did a few attempts of the evaluation. Yeah. And now that you pass one, that's uh, amazing to hear. So, yeah. walk us through it. Well, I think the, the as, as I first started to do the evaluations, I think patience was something that I, I wasn't practicing in terms of looking for a really good setup. One of the pieces I've read about day trading is around the psychology around day trading is almost the opposite of what you think would work. And for my example is I grew up on a farm in Canada and it, part of what we would do is just, we need to get things done your job was to go in that farm and get stuff done and and work hard towards that and i've always carried that through my entire life like get the job done then you can move on to your next task and next task and so on if you apply that thinking mindset to trading to get it done you're rushing and you're not waiting for the proper setup that's a big hurdle for me to overcome is that being patient looking for the right signs looking for confluences where multiple things come together in order to get into that trade and make that trade happen in the direction that you want it to happen. So that has been a, a tough thing for me to get over and be patient and wait for that setup. And, and then another piece I read was around, I was listening to a trader actually, and he talked about, he actually had a bike set up in front of his computer screen and just do, he would just work out and wait. And I just went, well, yeah, that makes sense. Cause you're waiting for the right piece all the pieces of information that you require in order to go into that trade. So I think that's been something that slowly but surely I've been able to, to overcome and that patience to wait for the, the right time to do it, which is the complete opposite of how I live my life in terms of getting whatever work I'm doing, like just focus, get it done, move on to your next task. So. Yeah. That, and that's gold because I mean, that's, trading right waiting for like a sniper waiting for that right moment and then strike and not just try to click the mouse key and do over trading and you know right. just jump in and out of trade that's actually yeah. what we need is that patient just to wait until we get the right setup and then click the mouse key so so that's super important and i love to see that you pass the evaluation and it shows also you know your character right as, as a person, because you didn't give up after one or two attempts, you continue to try it over and over until you get the job done, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so uh, thank goodness. So I'm yeah. going to share my screen and show your dashboard. For those okay. of you not familiar, every trader gets his own dashboard and you can see the process and the stats of, of your evaluation. So uh, let's dive into that a little bit. First of all, you traded the last one that you passed, the limited edition of the mini buying power. We just introduced that like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and we reduced the, the profit target that you need to reach in order to pass 1300. And then you trade in $20,000 buying power with no PDT rule. That's also very important, especially if you're in the States when you need at least 25K to day trade. You have the progress bar or the chart and then some numbers. Now let's talk about that before going into the chart, because this is very, you know, in your face, uh, risk reward ratio of one point to six, right? One yeah. to six. That That's kind of insane. 35% success rate makes sense. But tell me a little bit about yeah. that. So again, in, I had some, a couple of trades on here were fairly big trades, right? Which helped me in terms of the passing the evaluation. So I think in terms of the success rate being a little bit lower than probably we'd like to see, but I, I what I was really practicing and really tried to practice, I, I, I would get into a trade and then I would have a very tight stop in terms of, you know, if it's not going to go in my direction, I'm out, right? I'm not going to let this thing ride out. 
So I think he saw, in, if you look at the kind of the middle part of that, that graph, you're probably three or four or five, six trades right in there exactly after that big one where I just said, I'm going to try it. No, nope, yeah, I've got some small wins there, but the losses are all pretty, pretty small losses, right? You're, if it's not going to go in your direction, and I've read this before, you simply get out of it. And, and if it goes in your direction, great. You can pull up your stop loss. Once you have a nice movement in your direction, you can pull your stop loss to minimize, take a small profit, if you will. And then, yeah, so that's, you know, you can see there's several attempts there especially in the middle where it's kind of flat line for a while, but yeah. but then I got some nice trades there towards the end. And then the final one was a, a nice move up or it was a short, I think that last trade that pulled me over the top. So that's nice. Very nice chart. I mean, you started kind of rusty and yeah. then you found your rhythm because you already had a few attempts. Tell me a little bit about the, the differences, I guess, besides the, the patient that you, as you mentioned, yeah. is there any change in your strategy yeah. or? I think yeah. the, the, one of the keys, like I, I, you know, if you look at my data over those ones, I, I, I failed the attempts. It's more short bias. I'm a short bias trader. So, you know, I think the idea of being patient is, is, is ensuring that you are seeing perhaps, for example, a shift, a reversal, right? As an example, where a stock is, there's news, it's gone up. If you're jumping in too quickly, you're not looking for the right signs to be in place in order to, to take that trade properly. Right. So. So whether it's say, oh, it gaps down a little bit. Oh, I better get in before it gaps further, right? As opposed to that just being, that's just the dip in the, in the continuing movement up, right? That's an, actually buyers would get in at that point rather than that. So I think that's a piece that I've really finally been able to kind of break away from a little bit around that, that, that gap downward is actually a good time to buy it, not a good time to get in and short it. Right. So, so that's, it's been a bit of a journey for me on that for sure. But, but again, mindsets at what works for trading slowly, but surely kind of getting into that rhythm of, of, I think of being able to, to get in that trader mindset and what works and what doesn't. And how long you've been trading in general? About five years. Five years. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm 58 now and I am retired from my work, previous work that I did. And, and so this is a nice opportunity to do something part-time if, again, to just to have that another source of income. So nice. Very nice. Yeah. And let's touch that a little bit more because um, I just had an interview today. I had an interview with with one of our new funded traders, and he said he actually passed the swing program. Oh. Right? And he said that he's quickly understood that he got to do swing instead of day trading, right? And that was very shocking to me because it takes a lot of time to understand who you are as a trader, what's your style, and that you need to do more day traders compared to swing or the opposite. Did you have that also during your five years? Yeah, like, you know, in terms of exploring different approaches, you know, I think at the end of the day, I've always felt comfortable in in the day trading arena versus swing trading. I've read uh, some pieces around swing trading and some of the technical things you look for when you do the swing trades. But I don't think that I'm that comfortable in putting money in the market that would last for days or weeks at a time. That's just, yeah. I think a comfort level that I don't have. Like, I think the, the, I've seen where things drop overnight and, you know, market opening is like, I'm just not willing to yeah. know, risk the money, I guess. So. And uh, are you trading also your own account, like a broker account? No, I'm not. No. no. Did you have it? I did. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't, I, I didn't do great. I, it was to be direct. It wasn't uh, the most successful experience. So. And, that, and what do you feel like in the, in terms of the differences between trading your own capital with a broker compared to, you know, you're going into trade a pool and yeah. you have risk parameters that you need to stick to, right? On your own account, you can do whatever you like. But yeah. now that you're trading with a prop, you got to have those boundaries. What do you feel about that? How do you feel? So I, I think that for me personally, it's a, it's, it's I feel, I feel quite, actually I feel quite comfortable in that environment. That's amazing. Yeah. And okay. The, from here, basically you have your own funded account. Yeah. You can trade. Hopefully we'll do another interview when you get your first payout right. or more than that. Yeah. And I guess the last thing to, to sum it all up. You know, the guys that listen in right now and want to jump into the evaluation, what will be the top tip that you can give them, like one of them that they need to focus on in order to pass it? Well, I think the, the top tip would be to ensure you do everything you can to practice before you jump into this, 
like take the time to do the you know the evaluate the sorry the paper trading if you will and to to understand what is your strategy that you have shown that has worked for you and you can actually do it on a paper trading platform and once you already have that in your mind then you go ahead and you can jump into this to me that would be the one piece of advice and something i, I you know if i was a backtrack i would do more of before i jumped into these evaluation yeah that's yeah. super important yeah. thanks so much mike it was a pleasure and yeah. i'm sure the guys that listening right now enjoyed it as well for those of you who are not familiar with the whole process go check us out at traderpool.com hopefully you will become a funded trader and we'll get this interview as well thank you mike and best of luck we'll be You're welcome and, and and one more piece here thanks yep. to your team i've i've re- i've reached out a number of times and every single time i've reached out they've been fantastic so thank you thank you very much right take care guys yeah.